Okay, this is the uh, final video in the playlist where we've been looking at the uh, foundation tier and it's 2017 paper three from Edexcel. So we finished in the last, um, the last video on question number 20. So we're going to start now with question number 21. It's likely to be a fairly short video this one because we've only got three questions to do, but I would encourage you to follow the link below in the description, download the paper and have a go at the questions yourself. Okay, so question number 21 asks us to show that these two triangles are, and this phrase is mathematically similar. So what we mean by that is that the um, one is um, identical to the other one by some sort of what they call a scale factor. So it's bigger than the other one, but the angles remain the same. Okay, so what they've done with this is they've drawn it so slightly differently, but I think I would correct them a little bit and I would draw firstly the triangle the right way around because I think it's then a little bit clearer to understand what's going on. So what we're saying is, is that while these angles remain the same, the sides obviously have changed. But what we need to know is how much bigger these sides are. Well, if we look at this, we've got four to 10. So what we're saying is, what have we multiplied four by to get to 10? So if you divide 10 by four, you get two 0.5. So what we're saying is if we multiply 4 times 2.5, we get 10. Okay, so 4 times 2.5 equals 10. So let's have a look at uh, the other two sides as well to make sure the same holds true for the other two sides. So if I look at 5 and 12.5, I've got 5 times 2.5, that equals 12.5. Okay, well, this is looking good. So let's look at the last one. I've got 3 times 2.5, and that equals 7.5. So therefore, because they um, all multiply by the same, they call it a scale factor, then we can say that they are mathematically similar. So I'll put this in here, mathematically uh, similar. OK, as um, they have a scale factor. Sorry about my awful writing of 2.5. OK, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 22, which gives us some information on a table of values and asks us to draw uh, the actual grid and complete the table of values. Okay, so um, what we're basically saying here is the value of y is 6 divided by whatever the value of x is. So if we look at this, then we're saying the value of y is 6 because it's 6 divided by the value of x, which is 1. OK, because 6 divided by 1 is 6, then therefore y must equal 6. Um, so we can kind of use that same principle with, with all of this, really, to make sure we get the numbers correct. So um, you can pop these into a calculator or you can work them out. It's perfectly fine. We're saying here that 6 divided by a half, well, the amount of halves there are in 6 is 12. There's 12 halves in 6. OK, there's also four one and a halves because six divided by one and a half is four. OK, six divided by three is going to be two. And then we've got six divided by five, which is going to be one point two. And then six divided by six finally is going to be one. So hopefully you can see that that all I'm doing is I'm taking these values of X and I'm putting them straight into that part of the formula. OK, and then it says on the grid below, draw the graph for those values. OK, so hopefully I'll be able to do this OK on the uh, on the video. It's going to be a little bit tricky to see, but um, I'll read the uh, values out as I'm plotting them. But I've got 0.5 right down here at the bottom of the screen there, bottom left hand side. Um, and that's 0.5 to 12, so that's going to go there. And then I've got 1, 
okay, to six, that's going to go here. And then I've got one and a half to four, well, that's going to go here. And then I've got two to three, that's here. Three to two, okay. Four to one and a half is about there. Uh, five to 1.2 is there and then six to one is there. Okay, so with this particular one, and this is gonna be really difficult to draw it on the screen, but I'll give it a go. So uh, without moving it too much, I've got this really nice kind of, except the way I'm drawing it, but very nice curve that you get with um, that kind of formula. Okay, so I hope that's all right for you. It doesn't actually ask us to read off any values, but occasionally these sorts of questions you'll you'll get asked to read a value and put down a value. Let's say if if x is um, let's say if x is four point five, which would be here. What's the value of y? Well, that's going to be one point two along here. So sometimes these sorts of questions you get those as well. Okay, let's move on then to question number twenty three. And uh, 23 deals with the value of a house. And it says, write down the least possible value of the house. Well, um, okay, this is correct to two significant figures. The least possible value of the house would be 155,000. Okay, and then it says, write down the greatest possible value of the house. Well, I did look at this. Now, one of the things I should have done is checked the uh, the marking scheme on this because there is something in the higher levels that's called bounds. So occasionally we have questions on bounds. And it, if it was a bounds question, then that would be 165,000. But it's not. It's a rounding question. So the value of the great, uh, the the greatest possible value of the house to two significant figures. So that would be 164,999. Okay, um, I need to kind of check that one, but I think I'm okay with that. So my apologies, I've got it wrong. Okay, so then it says the value is of the value of Rita's house increased by 5%. A house then so after a 105% increase, it had a value of 210. Work out the value of Rita's house before the increase. So what we're saying is, is that at 210,000, that equals a value of 105% um, before the increase. Okay, well... Um, when you've got percentages, it's actually much easier to deal with making those into a decimal. So rather than that, I'm going to write 1.05. And rather than write before increase, I'm going to put BI. OK, just because it's uh, a bit quicker. OK, and that equals 210,000. OK, so if I want to work out the value of the BI, the before increase, what I do is I take that 210,000 and I divide by 1.05 and that equals the before increase. And if I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get a value of that of 200,000. OK, I hope that's OK for you. That's actually the end of this particular video. So it's a very quick um, eight or nine minutes or so. Um, I hope the whole playlist has been useful to you. Please do add a comment below. Subscribe to the site. Um, also, search through the, uh, the website and there are lots and lots of videos on that on lots of different subjects. But if you aren't sure, do add a comment. I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.